Hello everyone. The next part what we will be uh, studying now is a very important aspect of HR and that is to do with HR compensation. Now in terms of uh, some of the compensation st systems that are uh, prevalent, uh, the first one is a very traditional compensation system which a lot of us are aware of. Now in such systems they typically incorporate the use of job analysis and that is to do with based on the job description or certain uh, specification others uh, required for a particular job. Uh, they determine the knowledge, skills, abilities known as the KSAs uh, of the individual to performance that jobs. Now the jobs are evaluated only on a small set of compensable factors. Now compensable factors are those factors on which the compensation is based on each and every trait that is required to accomplish or do a particular job. So whether if you are doing a marketing job uh, or you are doing a sales job or you are or you're into a leadership role, every role will have certain uh, characteristics that you are supposed to perform and every correct characteristics or a trait will have certain compensable elements uh, and in terms of certain points allotted to it. Uh, eventually they are all summed up and they are evaluated and that is how the grade structure or the pay structure is formed. Uh, so this point system is a common job evaluation approach uh, to assign points to each job on the basis of compensable factors. So each factor uh, will have these compensable points in terms of the weightage uh, that is required for each trait uh, that uh, is required uh, for you to accomplish that particular job and that is how the, the, the final salary structure is um, made. Of course, uh, salary surveys are a must and they are used to determine the external equity. Now what is happening in the market outside? Obviously you want to see what your competitors, other organizations are giving in terms of the salary ranges and that is where you try to balance it out uh, or sometimes even go a little uh, higher than the average uh, market uh, rates which are there to ensure that equity with the market rates and rates of composition set by balancing considerations of your internal and uh, external equity. So that is what you do in terms of how you want to uh, a very traditional make a very traditional kind of a compensation system. The other one is the skill based pay. Now as the name uh, implies it is based on the skills that every person has. So skill or knowledge based pay focuses basically on the individual and not really the job in contrast to the traditional approach that we discussed uh, a little earlier. Now employees perform a number of jobs receive the same pay rate irrespective of the job that they are doing and employees can typically start out at a base rate increase their compensation as they master a sequence of skill blocks. So as you keep on mastering uh, your skills, so for example if you are doing a security uh, uh, guard job and you are also uh, doing a data entry uh, operator uh, in addition uh, and uh, you may be given an additional task uh, by the um, company maybe to uh, manage uh, suppliers or some vendors. So for every skill that you have you will get compensated uh, based on these uh, external or extra skills uh, that you have and that is the skill based pay uh, that companies then give. Um, the other important aspect in that is in terms of broadbanding. So what is this? It involves a reduction in the number of salary bands or pay grades. Now General Electric which is one of the largest uh, MNCs was able to reduce its number of salary bands to just 5 for all the employees. Some companies have a number of very large uh, bands uh, but the other companies even a big company like GE uh, wants them to be restricted for ease of use and understanding. So for example the first band for professionals might range from dollar $55,000 to dollar $91,000. The second band for management might range from dollar $58,000 to dollar $121,000 and the third for leadership might range from dollar $110,000 to $205,000. Now if you see there is an overlap of the salaries within that particular band. So whether if this is from 55 like to 91, uh, uh, some part of it is also contained here and some part of this is also contained here. So the salary ranges within each band covers a wide range of compensation as you can see. The advantage is that the employee's salaries can be raised substantially 
even without a promotion. So, if the promotion criteria you have, uh, you know, a certain considerations, you can always increase in terms of the grades. So, some, sometimes companies have like grade 3 or 2 or 1, but then the same band and they can still keep increasing the salaries uh, of uh, the particular employees who are doing uh, good work. The other aspect of uh, pay is also the team based pay and as the name um, uh, implies typically a team based pay is operationalized by specifying a goal or desired outcome and then allocating to all team members a reward for its accomplishment. As the name suggests it is more to do with the whole team effort and the team gets uh, equitably uh, compensated uh, once they have accomplished their particular jobs that they were given. Advantage is that it facilitates and uh, co cooperation strongly links desired behaviors with desired rewards. So, it is a very useful term in terms of gets that bonhomie or kind of togetherness of the team uh, and that whole team gets compensated for the job that they do. A study also found that gain sharing, increased productivity and employees worked smarter. So, a lot of surveys have been done including a lot of studies and they found that if uh, people or employees can function together as a team, uh, the productivity level uh, really increases, the synergy level really increases uh, because of that which helps uh, any particular organization. The other kind of uh, pay or compensation is called the variable compensation. So, this is done by linking a portion of employee compensation to various employee uh, performance measures. Bonuses based on company performance would constitute uh, to form uh, add-on variable pay. So, yeah, whatever bonuses many times if the company does well, it shares its profits even with the employees, uh, with the employees uh, and that is what we call the variable compensation. Depending on the performance of the company, you will get a variable allowance in terms of uh, in addition to your actual pay. Uh, another important consideration is for the executive compensation, that is the management and the top level management, the salary structures that they have. So, Cantor recommended that large executive bonuses or stock options should not be allowed at all unless comparable bonus system exists for all employees in general. So, the general trend is uh, and uh, since the last recession which really started uh, from 2007 uh, in most of the countries where CEOs uh, or the higher ranking uh, uh, directors and the managers could take away a major chunk of the salary that was somehow uh, you know challenged and stopped. And um, what Cantor had recommended was equity. Uh, it is not that you will get the same pay uh, for everyone, but yeah, equity in terms of a substantial increase or increase across the whole uh, board of employees. Now, in terms of the reward system, the total reward package, if you see the total remuneration consists of certain tangibles and intangible. The tangibles are your basic pay over time, other payments made, your benefits, share ownership, profit sharing and your performance bonuses which are in terms of the money that you get. The other are the intangible ones. So, this was the tangible one and this is the intangible one. Quality of working life, skill development being given to you, the opportunities that are there in your careers, empowerment of the people, flexibility in your schedules, recognition of whatever you are doing, your work life balance to balance your professional and your personal life, the challenge in the job itself. So, all these are also intangibles which is like an intangible reward uh, for the employee that he gets. Now, a salary system uh, consists of uh, as you said the grade structure consisting of hierarchy of bands or grades to which are allocated groups of jobs that are broadly comparable in value and the pay structure defining pay ranges or scales of each grade allowing scope for each progression and increases accordingly to the length and service of performance. Let us just see this over here in terms of how it is made. Now, this is the salary system grade structure. So, if you see on the y axis is the salary per annum that is plotted and on the x axis are your grades. So, grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in that if you see, so this is the grade let us say for uh, in terms of grade 1, this is the kind of salary that they get with some base level and that and if you see there is an overlap between the grade 2 and grade 1. So, like I was trying to explain to you even what GE has done and then of course, it yeah, goes higher. So, then you go to grade grade 3 again there is an overlap uh, and the salary of course increases and the higher grade grade 4 uh, where the salary is higher and also there is an overlap and that is how a lot of companies 
are you know making their uh, salary systems uh, in terms of the grade structures that are there. So as an activity I would like you to uh, think about this uh, that is there really a salary policy and structure in your organization that you are working in or an organization do you know it is very important from the point of view of equity and you know human satisfaction uh, and motivation and what are your salient, uh, salient uh, details so think about it and think also how the whole system can improve if there are some shortcomings. Thank you.